Good morning. We'll be using Morning Setting Daily Prayer, page 295 in the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Using Psalm 119, section Gimel, uh, Gimel, the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So Psalm 119, verses 17 to 24. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep, your, and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your just decrees at all times. You rebuke the insolent, the cursed ones, who wander from your commandments. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your testimonies are my delight, they are my counselors. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Text for meditation this morning comes from Genesis chapter 19. Uh, this follows the meeting of Abraham and three men. Uh, one of the men stay behind, just assumed that it is the angel of the Lord because the Lord is speaking with Abraham. And this one, uh, this one angel, as the Lord is speaking, uh, uh, basically saying that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of its sin, and then Abraham tries to. Uh, tries to save the city by saying if there are at least ten people within it, uh, please spare it. So the two other angels go wandering off, and that's where we are now. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house, and prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called a lot. Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, so that we may have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them, and shut the door behind them, and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied, and they said, This fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Mott and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, Hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. 
With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away with and the city is punished. When he hesitated, the man grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere on in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well. I will grant this request, too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town is called Zoar. Zoar means small. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down, bringing sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities, and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land, like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot, lived, Lot had lived. Lot and his two daughters left Zoar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man around here to lie with us, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father drunk, uh, father to drink wine, and then lie with him and preserve our family lying through our father. That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and lay with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I lay with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and lie with him so we can preserve our family lying through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went and lay with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the, he is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him ben Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. This is the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. I didn't really want to say, um, this is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God, in the sense that there is not a lot to be thankful for in that particular passage. Genesis 19 is basically exposing the core, <laughs> some of the worst human sins that there have been in, in the Old Testament. Um, yeah, going back to the beginning, uh, the two angels arrive in town. Uh, they come to Lot, they tell him of the coming destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and Lot tries to protect them. However, the presence of these two angels does not go unnoticed. So the people of Sodom and Gomorrah come out and they try to forcibly have sex. So they want to they want to rape these two men, or, or who they think is, are men but are actually angels. Now, Lot tries to defend them, and these people say, well, if, if you don't get out of the way, we're going to treat you worse than these angels. So, you can only imagine how much worse it would have been for Lot. Lot tries to protect them by offering his two daughters in exchange, so offering these his daughters, I'm not even going to discuss this, uh, because it would be quite horrific to anyone who's trying to tune in to just hear a light message. But, essentially, uh, the men refuse, 
they want to go forward, but the angels, they, you save Lot by dragging him inside. They strike the, the people with blindness so they cannot even find the door to the house. And the angels continue their conversation with Lot. Lot tries to save uh, his future sons-in-law, or who he assumes to be his future sons-in-law, those engaged to his daughters. But uh, those two men do not want to, uh, do not believe him, they do not want to believe it, and they're kind of mired in the sin of the city, so they just don't believe it's all that sinful. After that, uh, Lot uh, tries to bargain with the angels to go to a, to a small place that can be spared rather than going to the mountains. Uh, the mountains representative of uh, getting up closer to God, upper, up closer to the heavens. But he wants to remain down closer to the earth and to what's comfortable for him rather than uh, what God directs. Uh, the angels grant this request and Lot and his two daughters and his wife, so four people, much less than ten, the number Abraham bargained them down to in the previous chapter, uh, bargained God, the Lord down to in the previous chapter. They make it out of the city, but are these four people really righteous? The wife looks back to Sodom. Uh, this is not just a glance over the shoulder, this is a contemplation of whether she should go back to this place of sin. And then she, becomes, she gets turned into a pillar of salt because she is caught up in the bench that Scott has over the city. So you have the three that are left, are these three righteous? Well, at the time of their salvation from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were not committing grand sins. Lot still offered his daughters quite unrighteously, but uh, you have the two daughters getting their father drunk, their father intentionally getting drunk. So Lot is not righteous because he's uh, becoming drunk and not doing as the Lord commanded, so we are commanded uh, not, to, not to be drunk, uh, to have our wits about us. And uh, the two daughters then commit sins against their father and become pregnant by him. Uh, the descendant, the descendants of one is Moab, <coughs> where you get the Moabites. They're in conflict with the Israelites throughout basically all of Israel's history, once Israel uh, the people of Israel come out of Egypt and settle on the land. And then there are the Ammonites, who are also in conflict with the Israelites as soon as the Israelites get out of Egypt. The, the Ammonites are fighting against them. So, at, at the end of the, from the beginning of the chapter to the end, you have the hope that there are some righteous people there. You see that there aren't any righteous people in the city, except perhaps uh, Lot and his family. But Lot keeps bargaining to have certain sins of his overlooked. Uh, his wife still feels attached to the place of sin, and the daughters, uh, even though they were blameless so far in the story, they he went into sin. <clears throat> when we when we kind of when we project this onto our modern times, we can. You'll say, oh, well, at least we don't have these rampant sins around us. Or at least there are righteous people in our land. At least there are people who are not doing evil. Uh, not, not the grand, noticeable evils of Sodom and Gomorrah. But are there? The people of Sodom and Gomorrah were trying to commit sexual sins, and it seemed like this was not the first time, nor did they intend, to it, uh, intend for it to be the last. And people of today commit sexual sins as well. Um, Jesus tells us in the New Testament that even if we look at another person with lust, we are committing adultery in our heart. How much pornography is out there? How much uh, clothing that it is trying to accentuate certain features of, of men and women so that, that you would actually feel lust for them? It's, it's rampant. Within our culture, we have almost institutionalized sin in many respects, and it keeps perpetuating itself within our culture. So, uh, sexual sins, uh, sins of 
uh, heat, um, sins of well, theft as well, uh, all types of sins against your neighbor. And it's seen, and certain, certain sins are seen as acceptable within our sight. So here in this story, uh, at the time of Lot and his family, it would have been reprehensible for anyone to have sex outside of marriage. But today that is extremely commonplace. So in terms of that type of sexual sin, God would deem our society quite sinful. And I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if it was at the same time as Sodom and Gomorrah, God would have destroyed our land as well, our, our culture, our, our civilization as well. Because God does see all these sins and he wants us to stop, but we don't. We keep perpetuating these things. However, God still sees righteousness. Uh, God still sees his promises that he gives to the people and he still uh, has mercy upon us. So God knew that Lot and his family would be sinning out when they came out of the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, but God still saved them. They were not guilty of those sins, so God still tried to save them. Uh, they, these people uh, went back on God's salvation. They fell away from the faith, you could say, and they turned back to sin. But God still is there and still is very much willing to save us, no matter what sins ha or happen to be around us or what sins we might be guilty of. God still wants to save us. <clears throat> when Abraham was bargaining in the last chapter for Son and Gomorrah, the Lord was not making any false promises to Abraham. God really wanted to save the town. Uh, he did not destroy it simply because he heard prayers of its sinfulness. He did not, uh, he, he investigated it, it himself. He investigated the town himself so that he might actually know what is going on and give the people a chance to repent. Uh, having the presence of two angels among us, well, you'd think that would give the people a chance to repent, but they did not repent. Instead, they wanted to engage in more sin. Uh, God uh, went to Lot and his family so that they might be saved, so that they might. Uh, uh, might be delivered from the destruction that was about to happen. And Lot and his family went back on that in their sin. But God still keeps coming. God still keeps coming to the people of the Old Testament and keeps coming to us. So the descendants of Lot, the Moabites, the Ammonites, there are numerous passages in the Old Testament which uh, prophesy destruction upon them for their sin. But there's also the hope that all nations, including the Moabites and the Ammonites, will come to God and live. For us, in a very personal sense, we keep sinning against God, but God keeps coming to us in his word and sacrament so that we might not be left in our sin, but forgiven and brought out so that we might live as his children, as servants of Jesus Christ, in whom we have forgiveness. Even though we might look at the most despicable evils there are in Scripture and despair in our own times that these things in the Old Testament have parallels to today. But we also have the hope and promise that God will continually come to us through his word and sacrament so that we do not have to despair of our sin, but can have forgiveness in our Lord Jesus Christ who desires all people to be saved from their sins. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed that can be found on the back cover of the hymn. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the
communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> o Lord God, the one who judges all peoples, please be with us and guide us to righteousness, guide us to uh, through your law that we might do what is needed of us, that we might do what we should. We know that there is much evil around us, and we cry to you, we cry out like the people crying against Sodom and Gomorrah, that you would uh, judge the peoples of this land for their sins, that they would uh, be called to account for all their evil. But also, Lord, we do not cry out as you only judge them, but that uh, you might come to them through the word and sacrament and that you have promised to your church, that you might first come to them uh, to call them to repentance, that you might, that you would first come to them through your gospel, that they might turn to you and believe, so that they might be forgiven all their sins. O oh Lord, please have all people come to you. Please, Lord, guide all people to yourself, so that all people may be forgiven their sins. Lord, uh, please act in justice to your people, so that uh, those who are those who are forgiven in Christ might receive the reward of Christ, that they might receive the blessedness of the kingdom to come. And Lord, we we pray that uh, those who go against your justice, those who act evil uh, evilly uh, against you and your people, that they must that they be judged in fairness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, you offered yourself in the place of sinners so that you would take on all their punishment, all the judgment that is reserved for them. Please be with us, please be with your church, please be with all people everywhere, that all people might uh, hear your word and, uh, and receive forgiveness through it. Please, Lord, be with us in all our, in all our days and uh, help us never to turn away from you, but always turn back to you when we sin. Please, Lord, always guide us to repentance and forgive us when we come. Lord, in your mercy, amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That all our doings may be preserved from sin, our lives sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ for your Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from the sin of every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord, for he forgives us all our sins. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 